Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, the final countdown to Election Day is on. Candidates making their final pushes tonight, hoping to get your vote as you head out to the polls in just a matter of hours now. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Bridget Bjorlo. Polls open here in Connecticut beginning at 6 a.m. And we'll be keeping our eye on all the races for you. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst is uh, with us now in studio with what we uh, can expect. Emma. Brent, Bridget, it has been a sprint to the finish here. Election Day, as you saw on that night. Nice countdown just hours away now and we'll have so much in-depth coverage of all the big races for you tomorrow. Obviously the presidential race is top of everyone's minds but there are important down ballot races as well. Incumbent Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy is facing Republican Matthew Corey and all five of Connecticut's U.S. House representatives are up for re-election including a tight contest once again in the 5th District between incumbent Johanna Hayes and Republican George Logan. There are also multiple state legislative races to watch. Now we've been covering all the possible impacts of tomorrow's election, including the balance of power in Congress, the future makeup of the Supreme Court, and even effects to federal funding for the state of Connecticut. Now we are expressing a period of time where we don't really know who is going to be in the White House and whether we'll continue to see federal money for things like our roads and our bridges and our highways, the kind of things that we rely on from the federal government. So I know our governor and the legislature are planning for both options. Obviously, um, I hope that Kamala Harris is the next president of the United States because I think under her administration, we will continue to see the kind of funding support that we've seen under President Biden, which has been very, very helpful for us to meet our obligations. But even if President Trump is victorious in this election, we will continue to do everything we can to maximize as much federal resources as we can, but also balance our budget here at home, which is something they don't even have to do in Washington. We do that here. We're leading the state level. Democrats and Republicans can still work together in Hartford, even though what happens in Washington is a bit of a mess these days. And you can see the rest of my conversation with Comptroller Sean Scanlon, as well as other exclusive election night analysis from Attorney General William Tong and many more tomorrow. We'll be streaming on Fox 61 Plus 24-7 tomorrow, but be sure to tune in for our on-air broadcast from 5 to 7 and 10 to 11.30 p.m., plus our special election night coverage on Fox 61 Plus after polls close from 8 to 10 p.m. We will, of course, also have our full team of reporters in the field following these candidates throughout the day tomorrow. It is sure to be a busy but exciting day. Brent, Bridget. Absolutely, we are ready for it. Thank you, Emma. In North Stonington, hundreds of early voting ballots might not be counted. The town's first electman says this was a registrar mistake and impacts around 1,100 ballots. He said people at the office were telling voters they didn't have to sign an envelope because there's a barcode on it with their name and information. He also said the team verified their residence and voter roll before folks turned in their ballot. But the law states that signatures are required on every early in-person vote. And now Bob Carlson and the town leaders are trying to get the word out so that people impacted come back in and make sure their votes count. Yes, there's going to be people no matter what I do. If they're out of town, if something happened that changed, maybe they're working a double shift. Uh, maybe there's something else is happening on, on election day, which is why they voted early. Um, yeah, I, I'd feel awful if, if we can't have their vote count. But uh, again, it, it was a mistake. It wasn't on purpose. And we're just doing our best to try to fix it. So if you voted between October 21st and October 31st in North Stonington, you can make sure your signature is added to your ballot by visiting the Education Center over on Norwich Westerly Road tomorrow on Election Day anytime from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. If not, your vote will not be counted. Carlson said for a little under 700 people now impacted, they came in on Sunday to correct their ballot, but they're still waiting on around 400 to do the same. And with the expansion of voting options comes the question of no excuse absentee ballots. Voters here are deciding that question through a ballot question, but many wonder how secure absentee voting for all really is. Well, statistics and state leaders tell us it really just increases the amount of legal registered voters that actually cast their votes. Fraud remains low, but after the scandal around uh, Bridgeport absentee ballots and alleged stuffing, we asked State Representative Matt Blumenthal, who has led the effort, why people would vote yes after such a mess. Both of the judges that administered the cases involving those mayoral elections recommended that we adopt a system of absentee voting for all. That's because 
our complex, narrow system creates lots of opportunities, first of all, for people to be confused or deterred from voting absentee, but also opportunities for unethical operatives to perhaps deceive people into voting when they shouldn't. Now, the hope is to take all the politics out of passing out and pressuring absentee ballots. You can get more information in our complete Connecticut voter guide by texting VOTE to the number on your screen. And if you're casting a ballot tomorrow, we advise triple checking your polling location. It may have changed since last year's election. Turning now to the weather, what's it looking like outside as you head to the polls tomorrow? Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frain joining us now. Rach, it's going to be a warm one. Yeah, we're looking at temperatures up around 70 degrees, so there is no reason not to get out and cast your ballot. And we know that sometimes that can be a reason for folks that aren't really able to get outside. The brush fire risk does remain very high, unfortunately. We remain bone dry as we head through the next week ahead. And the warmest day this week will be Wednesday, so we're starting to dial up the warmth tomorrow for Election Day, and then you are really feeling it on Wednesday when we could end up once again breaking records. 53 right now in Hartford, 56 the current temperature for the New Haven area, and we're looking at temperatures settling back into the 40s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. What about for your Election Day around the time the polls are opening? Temperatures close to 50 degrees. As we head through the afternoon, we're looking at high temperatures climbing into the lower 70s with partly cloudy skies. And as the polls are coming to a close, temperatures will be falling back into the mid 60s. But again, looking nice from start to finish. And then we are talking about those records that could go down as we head into your Wednesday. We're going to talk more about the warmer temperatures in the days ahead. And we also will look ahead to the next chance for us seeing some showers. Your full forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Rachel, thank you. Breaking news right now out of Hartford, where police are investigating a homicide. Officials say it happened in the area of Pleasant and Main Streets. We're still working to learn more details, and we'll bring you an update as soon as we learn more. Norwich Public Utilities is issuing a water supply advisory and encouraging residents to conserve water as drought conditions continue in the area. Residents are being asked to make changes to reduce their water consumption, including taking shorter showers, not leaving the faucet running when brushing your teeth, and only running dishwashers or washing machines with full loads in them. The utility company will update residents as conditions change. Brush fires continue spreading across the state, and state officials say there are 111 fires burning right now. Fox 61's Jim Altman got an up-close look at how crews are stamping out 447 rather, acres of flames inside Rocky Neck State Park. It is a new battle for firefighters, this one at Rocky Neck State Park, and this one has the park closed. There is some reason for alarm in East Lyme. We have this closed for public safety and our firefighters safety. Rocky Neck State Park is closed. The culprit, yet another brush fire. Rich Shank is the fire control officer from the DEEP's forestry division. I got here personally with one of our foresters. We made a map of it. It was approximately six acres in size at that time, but it was spreading rapidly. And it's in mountain laurel, which is a very volatile fuel. We're currently about 47 acres here in Rocky Neck. No word on how this fire started. Fortunately, crews are now in the mop-up stage. We got a first-hand look at what's happening from the front lines. So we're uh, uh, churning up the hot spots, incorporating water into it. Um, we are drawing water off of a nearby marsh um, and as well as a uh, hydrant within the park to focus on that mop up and uh, reduce the hot spots around the edge. There is a crew of 30 here and across Connecticut, Shank says they're getting help from all over. Rocky Neck is just one of about 111 fires that are statewide. Currently, we have a crew from Groveland, California that's working out here. We have another country, so Quebec is here supporting us. We had folks from New Hampshire, Maine, multiple other states and federal agencies and partners that are assisting. So in our time of need, it's coming back to us here in the state of Connecticut. In unusually dry conditions, seemingly, there is no quick fix. These fires are going to smolder until we get significant rain, and I mean two to three days and two to three inches of rain. And I don't see that in the future, so we're prepared for the long haul here. 
So it appears that the trail system here will be closed for quite some time, but when will the park actually open again? That could happen as soon as this weekend. The mopping up here continues. In East Lyme, Jim Altman, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Jimmy. A new Britain man charged with seriously injuring a Farmington police officer three years ago has been sentenced. 36-year-old Pedro Acevedo will spend the next 15 years in prison. Back in September of 2021, Acevedo pinned Farmington police officer James O'Donnell against his car, trying to escape from police. O'Donnell was seriously injured. He spent a month in the hospital, and it took a full year of rehab to get back on his feet. O'Donnell has since recovered and is now an officer with the Rocky Hill Police Department. Acevedo pleaded guilty to assault charges over the summer. And new tonight, a Cromwell Town employee is on leave amid a sexual assault investigation. A police say Salvatore Neshi, Cromwell's public health coordinator, turned himself in last week. He is charged with sexual assault in the fourth degree. Neshi was released on $5,000 bond and is due in court later this month. An internal investigation is now underway. Police are investigating a deadly crash in Wellington tonight. Officials say Paul Butcher was driving the area of Turnpike and Moose Meadow Roads around noon when he hit a tree in the left shoulder. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. State police are also investigating a deadly crash in Preston. Police say Frederick Coonan was driving in the area of Route 164 and Deerbrook Road just after 8 last night when he left the roadway and hit a tree. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Anyone who may have witnessed the crash should call state police.